Hello, you're listening to the Mongols Podcast. I am Sam J. Morgenstern, otherwise known as Janos Yalich, and this is... Me, Bijubi, which is me. Hello, hi, hi, <laughs> hi. Okay, that intro's a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, what, now, 20 seconds? Hard. All right, so... Well, we do not know if Jay Burke is coming yet, so um, I guess a bit, he is about. We have much expectations about him as the Mongols, and you're listening to the Mongols. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're talking about the best woman in Mongol history. You can fight me on this, Manduhai the Wise, and this is the rise of Manduhai the Yellow Dragon. Ooh, fancy name. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to have to explain that. So, anyways, um, so in order to start talking about this amazing lady, she, we're going to start with where she's born, Mongolia, obviously. Yep. Um, and it's around 1448, and she's kind of on the southern borders of modern-day Mongolia, right about, where Ch- right about where the current Chinese border is, although, of course, the Chinese haven't exactly expanded there yet. And she is another, and much like Timur, she is another protagonist that is, at least for the moment, not related to Genghis. Uh, okay. At least not in a way we can prove. Oh, even better. She is actually born to the Toros clan of the Oirats, and if you guys remember, that is actually, that is actually the poor non-pastoralist that with Chechi and that kind of got murderized by Ogre way back. And but right, but considering that the Mongols have been kicked all the way to Mongolia and are not in China anymore, imagine that the Mongols are in Mongolia <laughs> and not anywhere else. Well, they're still in Persia, but assimilating, and they're still in Russia. Imagine that the Mongols are in Mongolia. Har har har. And the thing is with. The Mon- with a lot of si- civil unity breaking down, there there's a lot more fusion of the tribes going on going on around. So the Choros clan is actually now being made up of several tribes, like the Omgus, the Kitans, and the Uyghurs. And there's actually a decent chance, at least, uh, Jack Weatherford from the Secret History of the Mongol Queens, uh, speculating that she may or may not have been related to Samur the. Bad, uh, the badass grandma that has helped save everybody last time around. Oh, so there's just a whole bloodline of, of awesome females. Perhaps there is, perhaps there isn't. Depends on where these two girls are related. Which we cannot prove. Yet. <laughs> yet. Well, for one, I don't think we have Manduhai's body. Which is kind of a thing with cons. Their bodies keep on disappearing. Huh. So yeah. I think what you mean... Is that they're vampires and they keep getting up? <laughs> Can we stop with the conspiracy theories? No, it's all I'm good for. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Okay, back to normal. Uh, and so, and, and her, and another noble thing about her family is that her dad was one of the guys that actually rebelled against S against S and Taisha last episode. So. They've got definitely a passion for kicking out overbearing prime ministers. And the, th- and the thing is that this era, is a, the era since the death of Samur, has been a bit unstable. I mean, like we still have one era on lockdown, but, we're, but his location's a bit all over the place. That's putting it mildly, actually. And... Uh, that means that people, and that means that the cons are kind of mysterious and kind of not necessarily in the records. And most of the Silk Roads, those fabulous trade routes that Mon- Marco Polo used to be on, are now controlled by warlords, and all of them are charging exorbitant fees, and you can't tell who's paying the bigger price. Well, technically, the merchants are bringing, paying the bigger price, but who's sell- but who's selling the big- but who's selling bigger on the route? More like it. Can you put a price on peace? There is no peace here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's going to be something that uh, Mandahai is in charge of. And, that, and most of these are uh, controlled by some of the tribes that actually were just destroyed by Genghis about two centuries ago. 
And now one of the other things that's showing up a lot more is that these leaders have Islamic names, like they're being called like Ismail or something. And in fact, speaking of uh, an Ismail, we've got uh, we've got Ismail who becomes um, he's, uh, Taishu Prime Minister of the Mongols, and he gets a special opportunity with his, with his current job. He actually gets to pick who gets to be the Khan. As you can see, the succession's a bit all over the place. <laughs> no surprise there. And with that in mind, uh, he actually picks a a relatively old guy with currently no children by the name of Mandul. And he becomes name he becomes a new great Khan and we're kind of sure he's related to Genghis. Kind of sure. Kind of sure is the really key word. <laughs> like, like we don't know for sure, but we just kind of assume that he might be because, you know, whatever. At this point we don't even know because there's just a million that could be and he might be so, yep, and on the, and with the, and with the fact that he's a bit old, that means he actually has multiple wives, specifically two. The first one is actually Ismail Taish's daughter, who is who is named Yeke Kabartu. Probably just butchered the heck out of that. And uh, she's not necessarily the hottest girl in the room, so he decided to go for a second one, and that's where our girl Mandahai comes in. And keep in mind, she's 16 at this point, so this is not consensual at all. Welcome to the 15th um, century, everyone. So he's just like, I'm going to marry you. And she's like, well, I can't stop you. Well, more like the parents are like, I can't stop you. <laughs> because, oh, well, he's the great Khan. He has whatever he wants. Oh. Because he's the great Khan. And, and I'm going to marry you. Okay, but I'm going to be cooler than you. <laughs> Oh, way cooler. <laughs> and this, and, and she is at the age of 16, and she is generally considered the more beautiful of the two wives. Ooh. So she is in favoring for a little bit. And on another note, that she's going to keep on climbing up the political ladder throughout the rest of this episode. And that is kind of fitting with her name, which actually literally means rising. So I guess you could say that this episode is called Rise of the Rising Yellow Dragon. Rise of the rise of the rise. Of the rise of the rise of the rise of the rise. Indeed. And so Ismail Begarson is the Taishu, and he basically just controls everything. He pulls all the strings, and Mandul, all he does is drink and occasionally bump. And. <laughs> <laughs> Me too! But not really, but that's a mood! Well, what's better for you, this hot girl over here or this nice big chunk of booze? <laughs> That's every con in a nutshell. Uh, see, I would go for the for the hot girl. <laughs> That's Robin for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm too not straight to be straight. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so and this is even to a point, and the Mongol Empire has gone down to the point where we don't even have uh, the old capital of Karakorum or Beijing because. The Mongols got kicked out of Beijing, and Karakorum is in ruins, and we can barely even find it anymore. And that means that we're holding the court in Monke Bulag, which is actually a bit west of the old Karakorum city. And as I mentioned before, Mandul has no kids, or at least no sons, and he actually has a bit of a rival. A sort of distant fifth cousin of sorts, by the name of Nune Bolot, who is actually a smart dude. When, you're, when your smart, distant cousin is like, hey, I don't like you, and you're just kind of like, oh. Well, he's okay. the chief general, so he kind, they kind of have to get along, and plus, um, Ismail is the real guy who's pulling the strings. And why are we looking at a fifth cousin? Because actually this guy, uh, Unai Bolod, is actually descended from Hazar, one of Genghis's half-brothers. Specifically the guy who got, who got to go with Genghis to shoot the oldest brother. Oh. Yeah, okay. because hunting trips are a great way to find your brother on a job interview. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because Hazar later became a general, and I guess uh, Unai Bolod got to inherit the old family occupation of being a general for the next con. So, 
and that means a lot and that means a lot of good stuff for him he also ate, ate it a, a few years ago in the flight of Bayam Monka one of the last living heirs of Genghis Khan within Mongolia and this uh, and this flight was actually led by the general Ogade Bayatur aka the guy who was um, relegated to a corner for 13 years despite doing nothing but good work for Essen Prime for Mr. Prime Minister Essen. Did you just say corner or coroner? A corner. Just shoved in the corner while okay. Essen, while Essen got to do all the cool and stuff. I'm like coroner, being a coroner sounds cool. <laughs> and 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 that but uh, and that means that Mandul uh, already has a rival, and that means also Manduhai sort of has a rival through an Ebolod. But now we're going to add on another rival. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you have a piece of paper so I can keep track of all these rivals? <laughs> how how many are we on now? Four. Um. Yeah, about four because we got uh, Manduhai <laughs> rivaling with her husband, Manduhai rivaling with. The other woman. Oh my gosh. Um, Nanduhai is also rivaling with uh, <coughs> with her uh, cousin-in-law of sorts, and now we're and, and now we're adding on and, and now we're adding. Oh geez, I forgot pencils. <laughs> Pencil. Oh, I should have probably one around here somewhere. Ah, jeez. <laughs> Keep talking. I'll, I'll be right there. Yep. And anyway, so Unebolo, um, the uh, Manduhai and uh, Ayaki Kavartu and Mandu will get. A new rival, and in case you're wondering, it's the Bayamonka kid that we were talking about earlier. Found a pack of gum on the floor. <laughs> that's not a pencil, but okay. You want some gum? <laughs> nope, that's probably a very bad piece of gum currently. Maybe, I mean, it's polar ice flavored, so the mint will just kind of kill any of the germs. There's a whole bunch of napkins and some tongs. There's a water <laughs> bottle. Just because they're filming a, pod, a Mongol podcast doesn't mean they have to make a Mongol banquet. What meat gum and napkins? Oh So anyway, so Bayam Monk has officially shown up to the door, and he's basically going on a "Don't believe me, just watch" routine. And he's basically, I'm the cool kid, I'm the new descent to Genghis Khan, hey, can you make me heir? And the uncle, Mandel, is like, um, sure, it's not like I've got any sons, right? Besides, that keeps the general and my second wife off my tabs. Unfortunately, that's also going to push those two together, but I'll get on with it. <laughs> and, but also before he arrived at the court of Mandel Khan, Bayamonka actually got a new kid. And this kid's known as Batu Monka, and, and, and he fathered this with a girl named Sikar, a commoner, before he reached the age of 20. And that also was not consensual. She, the mom's actually older than the father, which is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so my Monka kind of shows up, and he's and he's basically adopted into the family as basically a son, an adoptive son slash nephew slash uh, crown prince, and that means he gets a brand new title, which is basically Bolku Jinong. I probably just butchered that, and that translates from Mongol into Golden Prince. Oh, I want I want to be called Golden Prince. Not that he's going to do anything because Ismail's still in the room pulling all the strings. Then again, well, that's what booze and a couple wives are for. <laughs> so they can keep you occupied and not think about actually running the empire. Not that there's much of an empire. That, oof. Oof. <laughs> And Une Bolod and Manduhai are starting to think, well, we just got a new rival. Mandu's completely ignoring the both of us. Kind of want to have a secret partnership? I'm sure, says Manduhai. And also, and also that leads to some speculation to, from the people that they're ruling over that they're together, um, together, together, because remember, Une Bolod's a guy. Oh. Right? Because we can't have girl generals. That's not a thing. <laughs> Not even in Mongolia, which kind of makes me sad. <laughs> See, I was hoping for lesbians. <laughs> well, we're not getting any. <laughs> That's a shame. I know. 
But anyway, so they were sort of becoming a team, and Mandul and Mbayamonka want to expand the land, specifically into Ming China. So that means we're going to have to check back in on China. China's not as young and prosperous as it used to be. So the thing about the young and prosperous China that we all know and love is that it had some really cool stuff like Zheng He sailing, uh, sailing big, uh, big ships three times the size of a football field to Indonesia. Ooh. Yeah, but that dynasty's kind of gotten old and doesn't want to sail anymore. In fact, it's banned sailing. Oh, so it's like that song? You know, about like sailing, you know? Well, yes, except it's banned Somewhere now. Somewhere <laughs> beyond the sea. <laughs> Somewhere waiting for me. My lover stands on golden sands and watches the ships that don't go sailing because it's banned. <laughs> Indeed. And that, um, uh, and that means... Uh, that there, that everything's a bit expanding, but also the Ming Emperor has a bit of an overbearing mom slash wife. It's getting confusing already. Oh. I know this. Don't you just hate mom wives? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and this gal is Lady Wan. She gets to even lead a couple armies in battle, but she also is an overbearing mom wife. So I'm kind of just confused. And that, and, but and with that bit of expansion, there's a little bit of border conflict, and that also leads to Mongols thinking about like who's getting shipped, and that means everybody's thinking that Mandul is being shipped with Yunnan Bolod, and Bayamonka is being shipped with Mandul's first wife, or at least that's the rumors. Yeah, I know this court's going to go downhill very yeah. fast <laughs> because this is probably illegal. This is like this is like keeping up with the Kardashians, but it's not. It's Mongolians. Keeping up the Mongolians, except it's way cooler. <laughs> that's true. There's a lot more death, and that's nice. Can't go wrong with death. So, but the thing is, so uh, the possibility of buying Monka sleeping with the first wife isn't as illegal as people think it is, because as long as the first wife stays with Mandul. She, it, it is technically not illegal. Oh, shit. And so, Beg Arslims passes on his responsibilities as Prime Minister to Ismail, and that means we have a semi new Prime Minister with a Crown Prince that may or may not be sleeping with the Queen. We're not sure yet. And the, but the rumors are still streaming in. Ismail is kind of, I'm not sure yet. I might want to start betraying people now, though. <laughs> and, and certainly, and certainly Mandul gets, and certainly Mandul gets suspicious of the whole, of the whole affair, and by Munka is suspicious of Mandul plotting against him. And so there is a bit of a civil war because Bai Munka gets a little bit of popularity from being the young guy and the new descent to Genghis Khan, and Mandel gets some popularity from being the Khan. But this civil war is very short lived because Mandel is the Khan and has a bigger army. So Bai Munka yeets himself out of the court and runs like hell. Yay! <clears throat> and. In the meantime, the first wife actually vanishes. We don't know whatever happened to her. Murder. And possibly, who knows? But, and by Munka starts looking for the son he fought with Sikher. And, but then, and he gets over to a camp where he has a little bit of a nice dinner. And then people are noticing that he has a very nice belt because he's still in his fancy attire because apparently he didn't think of disguising himself. So people decide. So the people who are hosting him around start asking for his belt, and he says no because that puts me in a certain position of subservience. And then they just all leap on him and kill him. So he's out of the picture. So if you're keeping track, we went from four rivals all the way down to just two. Cool. And that means those? that's Une Bolod and uh, Manduhai because they're still in the game. Cool. And now they're teaming up more officially. 
Ernando is officially dead of old age, and Ebolo decides, and Ebolo is even thinking about making a move for the throne, and he actually proposes to Mandahai. And people are thinking, so is this ship becoming canon? And Mandahai is like, now hold on a minute. <laughs> I have a couple of decisions before me. The Ming army are also giving me a good option. I can join the Emperor's harem and have a nice luxurious life for, uh, for, uh, for the next uh, God knows how long. I could also just look out for, look for, a, uh, uh, buy a monk who's uh, abandoned kid. Or I can just go with Une Bolo and be semi-safe and try to take out Ismail. And apparently she decides to take the risky move of the game because she's just that gutsy. Yeah, see, I would have uh, joined uh, the harem. <laughs> Indeed. And <laughs> so she goes on the risky plan and decides to find, the, <laughs> decides to find Batu Monka. And she manages to find him in a camp with an old lady. The old lady was a bit old and neglectful, and the kid's kind of thin and starving. So uh, Manduhai takes pity and basically over moms. <laughs> and she, and the meantime, she's also trying to set him up as official Khan. But that's kind of hard when you don't have Genghis's or when you don't have the right relics for the job and enough people to support you. And that means specifically they're trying to find the right horsehair banner, but they don't have it. So uh, Mandu Hai actually improvises on the cruel Thai election and she holds it in front of the shrine of Eshi Katun, who is apparently the first recorded Mongol queen because that's what Eshi means first. Oh. And this is about uh, um, fourteen seventy. Oh, we're getting called by Jay Burke. Hello. Hello. So hello, Jay Burke. You have arrived. Ooh. What happened to your Ooh. audio? Ooh. Ooh, just, just wait, cause look, there's words on the thing. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh my gosh, there's words on the thing. There's words on the thing. Okay, you can stop shaking. <laughs> so cool. Okay, so keep on talking about uh, Manduhai rescuing her kid. Yep. Yeah, not joining a harem. Well, she's certainly. Oh, he'll he'll be right back. Cool. So, anyways, and also this uh, cruel tie that crowns by uh, Batu Monka is technically Manduhai agreeing to marry Batu Monka. Technically, that's according to law. It's not official yet. Because keep in mind, the kid's not even in kindergarten yet. Oop. Just a small child. Indeed, and he is known as Dian Khan, which technically means Great Chuan Khan. And, and with the Khanship in such a defunct state, uh, Manduhai says to the Ming Dynasty, Hey, can, you, can we not um, butcher each other's stuff? <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to join your harem, but can we still be friends? Yeah, sure. It's like, like she friend zoned the yeah. dynasty. She also friend zoned Une Bolod, but Une Ooh. Bolod's also quite loyal and is a good general, so he's got a decent army. When you just friend zone everyone. <laughs> and also, another big note that's really happening right now at the moment is that the gun is overtaking the bow. Oh, so now they have shooty sticks, like, like uh, well, Rudy Tootie Point and shooties. We've always had shoot, uh, shooty sticks with the Mongols, but now the shooty sticks are kind of getting good. Uh, to the point where some people are ditching the bows, because the big thing about being a mounted archer on a horse is that you have to basically be trained your entire life, wreck your back when you're old, and, sh and shoot an 80 pound bow at, and shoot an 80 pound bow hundreds of times in battle, which is a lot to ask of someone. Yeah. 
Not to mention the arrows get expensive too. So people are thinking, well, why do that? And basically spend my entire life on archery when I can have a gun that punches just as hard and requires me to train a whole lot less. The only difference is accuracy and the fact that I can't shoot this darn thing off a horse. So I can get off the horse a bit maybe. Who knows? Making this up as I go. Neat, neat. So they're just kind of figuring out how to not use bows. Mm-hmm. And that, but with everything being moving and changing, Manderhide decides on another new change. We're removing the capital people. Ooh, that's a that's a big change. You can't just move capitals. Where's she moving it to? Um, she's moving it a bit closer to the Silk Road, right around the Gobi Desert. And this is because, well. We're on a trade route. You can control the trade, and you can now tax the trade. Oh. And you can also use Zone Below's army to protect the people on the road so that they don't get robbed. Yeah. Which is terribly convenient than how the Mongols succeeded the first time. So, very nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and that means that she also has a, quite a bit of legitimacy. She has an official heir of Genghis Khan. She's technically married to him and also she can divide and conquer all the warlords because she has the air in the bag and she and one of the other things that really helps her image is that she's leading all her camp leading all her campaigns in person but at this point Ismail Taish is still trying to run everything but Manduhai doesn't stand for saying yes to the guy necessarily apparently Lesbian. <laughs> More like a MILF. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, does she have a kid? Mm, she has adopted a kid. Okay, but then she's not a MILF. I mean, she, she technically a married the kid well, as well. But that's because she's not technically. I mean, like, she's a mom because she's raising a kid. But, like, she's not, like, it's not, it's not the same thing as a MILF. We're getting there. <laughs> Oh, Jaybrook's coming in. Woo, again. Hello. Hello there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep, we can hear you loud and clear, sir. Disembodied oh, voice. <laughs> we can hear you like the new Mongol guns that happen to be in Mongolia. Disembodied voice. I've been busy. Haven't all of us. <laughs> Disembodied voice. Yeah, so we're talking about Manduhai, the badass Mongol lady that's going to save us all. And how she's not quite a MILF, but... Is going to be one? That, yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to wait for it. Yeah, she's already found the kid that she's marrying. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh gosh, that's... Uh, it gives me, that, that gives me a creepy crawl. It's like, no thank you. She's already out of one husband. Her second husband's not... Technically official yet. We don't need one of those uh, Oedipus things. Like we don't need a, a redo. They're not. Uh, okay, they're not related though. But that's still weird. Okay, you're not wrong there. <laughs> and we also have an overbearing prime minister that needs to get killed again. I guess we need to get me a time machine. <laughs> well, Mandahai is going to take. Mandahai and the Ming army are going to take care of that trouble a bit for us. Oh, nice. So, uh, um, so in one of the initial battles, kind of against Ismail, uh, Mandahai actually loses her helmet, and everybody's kind of freaking out. But she still keeps on fighting and uh, basically rallies everyone to victory, which is really nice. And it's a nice big PR boost that goes across Mongolia, basically saying, "Hey, the woman who's raising um, the new Khan, she's cool. You should work for her." Yeah, nice. Get those job applications rolling. See, I wish that's how it kind of worked like these days. Like, look how cool this lady is. She's doing great things. Love her. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's oh, just like, now sword you sword have sword. all of these assholes. Wait, I do have a sword. Why the hell am I talking about? Of course I have a sword. I can go off and join the Mongol army now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mood. I don't... I mean, Grab a sword, go to Mongolia, work for Mandahai. Oh my Love god. Love it. <laughs> Besides, you're, his, uh, you're a history buff, so she's, so she's already wanting you at least as a scholar. Uh, I want to be a scholar for the pretty 
pretty lady. She's the pretty one, right? Yes, yeah, she is the pretty, the pretty one. one. She is the pretty one, and she'll age like fine wine. Ooh, fine wine. <laughs> And that, and that also means that she knows how to play people against each other. So she kind of decides to try to ask the Ming Dynasty if they can also help her beat up on Ismail. Because Ismail still has a bigger army than she does. And uh, that's a problem. His dick is bigger than her dick. <laughs> she doesn't have one. Yeah. So There's the no way to prove she doesn't. So that means to some extent, uh, but the Ming are also kind of, um, we're not entirely sure about this offer because where you want to build a wall. <laughs> if you're wondering, that's going to be the Great Wall that becomes a nice big ass tourist attraction. So it's like not the former Great Wall that kind of is lame and just kind of like, like, like. No, this like is the real Great Wall. The real, great. okay, cool. So this is the real Great Wall. It is coming, but. Not everybody wants it, specifically the guy who's near the, nor the, bo the northern border for the Ming Dynasty, a guy by the name of Commander Wang. And it's, he wants to go a bit more on the offense. He wants to lure the Mongols out by having a very tasty caravan for them to raid and then surprise them with guns and crossbows. Oh dear. But all the eunuchs in the court who have all the real power because they all because they're inside the court with the emperor and control this every move are basically saying but that's way too dang expensive we need to load up those things with something tasty we have to get all the crossbows and all the cannons can we just grab a bunch of rocks and make a wall but you know like but he's um, no, but like Wong is like but that's not going to fix everything that's it's with my emotions. cheaper though but anyways, so but that means that Wong wants. But that means that Wong is a little bit in danger of his job. So he decides, I'm going to at least try to prove myself and go after Ismail. And he hits him like a truck. Okay. So at so at the battle of so or rather massacre of the Red Salt Lake. Wong shows up on Ismail with basically a giant army and says. Get out or I murderize. And the Mongols choose to the try to get out option and it does not work. Ismail gets out but he loses a lot of guys. And that to some extent means that Ismail's practically out of the picture. And Manda has a bit of breathing room but at the same time she doesn't trust the Ming. Yeah. Good idea considering how the, how the Chinese have treated the Mongols historically. I mean, think about how the Mongols treated the Chinese historically. Okay, true. Like, <laughs> it's a lot of animosity going both ways. Yeah. Animosity exchanges. <laughs> and also that means that um, Diane Khan has been growing up a bit. He's actually about high school freshman age. Aww, BB. Small child. And that means that... Hello? Cute baby face boy. Jayberg? Your audio is getting funky. Ooh. Well, Jayberg's dead. Not yet. <clears throat> not yet? Are you sure? Are you sure that's not just their skeleton coming out of their flesh prison? <laughs> Off to join the skeleton war? I think something went with our audio. Ooh. Not sure if it's your... Ooh. The skeleton's trying to talk to us. <laughs> Gags. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Your audio is really breaking up. Eh, they'll figure out that they should probably just type whatever the heck they're trying to say. Huh? Some gorillas. Salmonella. You know, mind if we just restart? Sound Garden. That's a good band. I'll restart. Call you back in just a hot second. Time to beep the buttons. Anyway, just 
building a wall because it's cheaper. Like that's <sighs> a mood. It's a mood that I didn't know that was mine, but it, it is. I'm oh, that, that explains it. My computer is all frozen up. Ooh. Just I'll control, restart it. Control Alt Delete that bench. But anyways, back to normal. Uh, so that means that Mando High is also mm, looking, mm, mm, looking to size up some more political marriages. And that means specifically she's working with the three guards. These, uh, mm, this is a faction that actually, uh, Mongols actually used to serve the Ming way back. But then they broke off from him when Essen was building up his power base and getting all of the Borgenaires. And then they abandoned him when Essen turned a little sour and started betraying people. The birds work for the bourgeoisie. And that means that Nando Hyde decides to make friends of them through a political marriage. She doesn't marry them, but she gets a friend of hers to marry them. Yeah, someone else. No, to marry one of them. And also, um, Diane Khan is starting to lead campaigns as a fresh 15-year-old learning strategy. And on top of that, he's officially married to Amanda High. She's pushing 30, so it's... Eh, she's pushing like 30s or 40s, so it's already... Yeah, I know. Ew, weirdish. She's pretty. Yeah, true. Don't That's... worry, we... Don't worry, the Ming Empire's not much better. We've got an overbearing mom-wife there, too. Ugh, mom <laughs> No, at least this gal's going to give him some self-control. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. And some responsibility. That's less good. <laughs> and and with Mongolia all un mostly under her control, Manduhai finally decides to show up on Ismail and wreck his shit. I mean, he's already been wrecked, but he's getting extra wrecked now. Yeah. Like, shot dead this time. Yeah. Arrow shows up in his chest, and the Mongols completely swarm over his camp, and he's basically out of the picture. Cool. Also dead. Very dead. So he's, like, completely out of the picture. Oh, he's yes. Dead. He did uh, and, and this is kind of a surprise ambush, so he never saw it coming. And shortly, ap and shortly after that, uh, Dian Khan is like, uh, uh, Dian Khan, because he knows that he's adopted, Actually goes up, actually goes off to find his uh, real mother, Seeker the commoner, and um, that, that's rude. Well, uh, it's only going to get stranger from here because he kind of meets her and he's trying to explain, "I'm your kid," and I'm kind of wondering why'd you leave me and explain stuff. But Seeker doesn't really answer or talk too much, so he's just kind of disappointed. Oop, poor thing. No, oh, and mm, she's also kind of old, and it's just like, I think I'll just go back to my mom wife who raised me. And he's like, oh, come on, lady, you suck. And, well, and that long stay kind of turns into a couple of years and three kids. Yeah, Amanda High's not on menopause yet, but hey, she's cool. Mm. <laughs> But also apparently, uh, but also apparently in battle, while on a later pregnancy, as she's building up her strength and armies, she actually falls from the horse in battle. Usually, that's a sign of the end times if you've checked your Mongol histories. Ooh. But don't worry, she's not dead. She is not dead. She is very much alive. So she just kind of was like, "Ooh, <laughs> the horse yote her," and then she was just. Like, yeah, thank you. I'm going to stick around. Yeah, and she survives the fall from the horse. She doesn't get too many injuries and actually manages to give birth to twins. Oh, wow. Well, that sounds like a good luck sign. Yeah, she is just defying everything and being an awesome mom. Yeah, mom wife. A++ for the mom wife. Pretty mom wife. <laughs> we stand. We stand. And we're also looking at Another sort of thing for Amanda High, which gives her some extra breathing room. Um, Lady Wan, the overbearing mom wife over in China, she dead. Ooh. Yeah, she dead of old age. And um, the Ming Emperor, who has been overbeared and um, seduced non consensually into a relationship with a cougar, is kind of, I can't live without her, and dies of depression a year later. Dies of depression. I have crippling depression. I died because I'm sad. Oh my no. gosh. 
Is it just me, or is that, is that like a like a just a, a a euphemism for like offed himself, or or did he? Just he like died of depression. He like he just died himself? of he died of a broken heart. Ah. Yeah, no, sounds straight out of a prequel. The Star Wars prequels. Oh gosh, <laughs> not this again. <laughs> Hello there, General Kenobi, and I'm not dying because I'm sad. Oh my god. See, Star Trek is better. I will fight you on that. I, you can fight me. <laughs> you can fight me. We have a Death Star. <laughs> okay, yeah, but we have better representation. Um, in the movies, yes. In the books, I will argue. Okay, you can argue that. That's fair. <laughs> But Seriously, the Star Wars books are cool. <laughs> There's a lot more diversity there. Oh, big mood. Yeah, no. We got aliens, lo lots of white boys, lots of black boys, lots of Asian boys, lots of Asian girls, so on. Yeah, and also, like, Star Trek um, was, like, the beginning mm -hmm. of fandom life. Like, the beginning. Okay, you're not wrong there. <laughs> like, like, and you know what? It started out as a girl's thing. And then straight white dudes named Kyle flippin' took it over, and now we all have to suffer even though it was ours to begin with. Oh my, shots fired. Shots are fired. And you, you bitch. And also, the, but also with all this power growing up, um, everybody, and suddenly somebody calls up to Diancon, Hey, want some more legitimacy? We found Genghis' shrine. And Diane and Amanda are just like, Eat over there now! And so they actually go over to Genghis' the shrine. He officially gets elected as Khan there, and everybody says, Say yes to the Khan! And it's not going to be the Holy Roman Empire this time, because actually everybody's saying yes to the Khan now. Big mood. And it's also nice because everybody's saying yes to the Khan. Say yes to the dress, but it's say yes to the Khan. <laughs> well, yeah, we are quite saying yes to the dress, indeed. <laughs> And with that in mind, as Dian Khan's growing up, he's about pushing twenties, and he has about he's pushing twenties or twenties uh, or thirties, and he's has a couple kids, and he he also has a bit of grown up kids, or slightly grown up kids, like they're about high school freshman age. Oh, so like, perhaps just like like young teenagers. Yeah, and you want to give those young teenagers jobs. Specifically, the the second son, Ulus Bolod, is actually given the job of being crown prince, which means he gets the title of Jinong, which was previously held by their by his grandfather, uh, by a monk, and, and and he's given control of a tribe known as the Barians. Unfortunately, this, uh, the um, commute to the job doesn't exactly work out too well. You see, the Baryans kind of have the one of the last remaining warlords. Okay. And the last remaining warlord wants to be a little spiteful and spit in, in Diane Khan's face. And what I mean by spit, he kills the kid. Yes, he killed the kid! What? And basically, the, and Diane Khan and Manduhai are sad, and Manduhai is kind of pissed because now we're over. <laughs> Hello. 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 Sorry, we have an event okay. uh, booked in here starting at 7. Okay. So, so anyways, um, hi, we're sort of back. We kind of got kicked out of our current recording room. And yeah. I'm still here though. I never finished. Yep, indeed. You do not for you are a disembodied voice. Disembodied also, voice. Also you imagine me, I'm not actually real. I <laughs> disagree because you have a sister. I do not. You do have I a do sister. Not. Also no you, evidence. you you met that cartoon lady? Um You mean Allison Bechtel? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Maybe the Chinese she's imagining me too. <laughs> and the Chinese government says it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Well, I'm the king of Spain and the Chinese government now, and I say it happened. Uh, There's Kismet. still a king of Spain, you know. <laughs> there is still currently a king of Spain. 
Yes. I sure <laughs> hope so, because I'm the king of Spain. <laughs> well, I'll put it this way right now at the moment. We, just like we could choose between three popes, we can also choose between one um, the two kings of Spain. No, no, no I, I am the only king of Spain. <laughs> I'm, the sole, I'm the sole king of Spain. You think I'm not, but I am. Can we get back on topic? We've got things to kill. No, I'm the king of Spain. Look, all I'm saying is Felipe the Sixth might have something to say about it. Well, he can say it to my face because I'm the king of Spain. <laughs> oh, dearie. Um, so, anyways, with that in mind, um, we're going to hit a really fast commercial break because everybody's about to die in a massive war. Woo! We oh, wait, why, why is that never going? Why does that never not happen, actually? <laughs> it's the Mongols, I know. But we'll be back after these messages. Ever wanted to start a podcast but never found the time or found that SoundCloud makes you pay for more upload time? Then Anchor is the right place for you. It is a Spotify company that allows for unlimited uploading time for free and distributes your content to people via Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, etc. It will also allow for sponsors and will sponsor you themselves. Your viewers can also create a donation plan through the same company to support your content. Sign up for Anchor today and get your podcast going. Because Anchor is great. Back to Mongolia. Yes, we are back from our very brief commercial break. Which we were apparently paid for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jaybird just Jaybird just learned that now. So yeah, yes, we are sponsored. This whole thing is sponsored by Anchor. So absolutely, um, they're owned by Spotify. So find them, call us, support us, um, wherever we are. But anyways, back to uh, back to Manduhai. So we, so we have a warlord by the name of Ibari who has just killed her kid named her second son, Ulus Bolo. And that kind of pissed off her husband slash adopted son. Wow. Yeah, Dian Khan's going on a new campaign. And it's to kill this warlord named Ibari. And he gathers up all his armies and he... Mm-mm, and he shares a hug and a kiss with uh, old, with the old Imanduhai, who is pushing her 60s. Ooh. Yeah, she has aged very much like fine wine as far as Mongolian women in the 15th century go. She's just impossible to kill. <laughs> oh no, death is knocking now. Oh, well, yeah, but like she's like up until that point, she's been like impossible to kill. Yeah, even falling off of a horse won't kill her. Fate had blessed I know that her. Feeling. <laughs> About falling off of a horse and not dying? <laughs> also not dying. And Diane Khan no- knows that she's old and she can't lead on campaigns, and Une Bolo's also, I'm pretty sure, dead. So we're basically looking at uh, Diane Khan leading his first official campaign completely 100% on his own without advice. And he's got to kill the guy who killed his son. So he's very hella pissed. And he sh- and he shows up on the Barians and he's and he says, "Where the heck is Ibari? I've got somebody to murderize." And well, Ibari comes out to meet him. There is a bit of a fight, but Ibari is very much killed. He is stabbed and killed, and anybody who's with him also killed. And the Baryans probably got assimilated into, into the Mongols, at least for the first time, if not for the second time, considering that Genghis also likes assimilating tribes. So, Ibari is dead, and Dian Khan decides, well, with that job well done, everyone, and my son properly buried, let's head on home. So he, so he rides home with his army. He rides for, let's see, a good few weeks and, and, and over to their capital on the trade route in the Gobi Desert, and he opens up the tent asking for Manduhai. And then he, and, but then he notices a servant with a very sad face. Wait, where's my wife? Such mom. Um, Diane? Your mom dead. <laughs> she just did. Oh, um, that's sad. Um, I'm going to go be sad now. But you've got an empire to run. No. Excuse me, I need to fail for the coolest Mongol lady in history. 
Like, We're calling her Genghis Khan Reborn, all right, people? Let's get used to it. Like, like, we love this woman and we're going to mourn her. Screw the Empire. Except for don't screw the Empire, but for right now, screw <laughs> the Empire. <laughs> and everybody has been... Um, and, and, and everybody's wearing a little bit black and everybody's saying, uh, Bye, Mandu High. We love you and we are going to miss you big time. And Mandu High of the Wise is buried over in the Sacred Mountains God no of God Knows Where. The Sacred Mountains are known as Burkhan Khaldun Mountains, where apparently Genghis is buried. But we can't prove that because we still don't have Genghis's body. Hey, they found uh, the Romanov's body, though. <laughs> we Ooh. certainly did. We even found Anastasia's body. They did? In a mine shaft, I think. <laughs> oh, uh, that's uh, fun. Uh, yeah, it's what I call sometimes we find royal family where we shouldn't be finding them. Well, she's a saint now, so. She's a saint now? She's a saint. Yeah, yeah the entire Romanov family was uh, canonized in 2000. Okay, okay. What's Good she, on them, I guess. She, what's she the saint of? Uh, she's not technically a saint of anything. It's a bit different than Eastern Orthodox tradition. She's a passion bearer and a martyr. Oh, okay. Right, cool. because she was shot dead by a firing squad. Because Lord knows you can't let the commies get. Uh, uh, Lord knows you can't. Uh, uh, you can't let the white uh, white Russians get close to the Romanovs because they want the Romanovs back. Not entirely. The Romanovs were just a loose alliance of anti-Bolshevik forces. Not all of them. Want to see a return to the yeah, right, 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 right. Some still want the Duma back. Hmm. Right. That's what we call Think Indian Idol in the Great War. <laughs> As usual, history buffs have all the same YouTube channels. <laughs> but anyways, back to her mourning for Mandruhai. So she's buried in Burkhan Khaldun and. Our friend Dian decides to uh, name another uh, decides to name another heir, which and we're going to talk about him and his heirs. Um, actually, next podcast, because uh, I decided that we need to dedicate everything to Mandahai, so that included just an entire episode of podcast dedicated to the most badass woman in Mongolian history. And Jay Burke's audio just got messed up <laughs> by the Mongols. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Say anything. <laughs> okay, so Jay Burke is back. And that leads us to another thing. So as another thing, I'm going to recommend a book for you guys to read on uh, on this podcast, especially if you want to get a hold of a bit of a primary source. Along, alongside, for, alongside the secret history of the Mongol queens, we have the Mongol Chronicle, also known as the Altan Topshi. It also took me. It was also a total nightmare for me to tra track this book down. Ooh. So I looked it up originally in the footnotes of in the footnotes of the Secret History of Mongol Queens, and I tried just looking up the book itself without uh, finding translator. So I managed to find it in the middle of the Cleveland Public Library, which is about an hour from here. So I drove over there, but I forgot. But I forgot to ask for the translation because uh, this book was in the original Mongolian. Oh, that's so cool. But I'm also not able to speak Mongolian. So I got to look at some fancy pictures, take some notes, and then leave. But hey, that was a cool experience. But at the same time, I needed to find the actual book so I could at least fact check myself. So I put in the translator with the book and eventually managed to find this at Kent State. Hmm. Very nice. Ordered it over here and, well, now I'm using it. So, if you guys can find this, I'll be sure to try to post a good link for it. If you, a good link, a good link for those who want to buy it or want to order it at a library or something. I don't know. And um, yeah, so find the Mongol Chronicle or the Golden History. It is a it is a pretty good read, just not necessarily designed for modern readers, <laughs> because, but also. It's not as primary of a source as primary sources can be because it's actually technically written about 150 years after Manduhai's death. Ah, it's uh, close enough. Ah, it's close enough, and also that means that the Mongols are semi-subdued. <laughs> 150 years is nothing. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. That is true. The game. Yeah. Past 150 years have gone by. 
flash. That is too true, my friend. And anyway, so on the next podcast, we're going to be looking at Dian Khan and his heirs up until everybody gets conquered by China and the Russians, because they're back. Oh, nice. So it's like it's like a restaurant commercial. They're back. And we're also partitioning World War II on a totally different continent. Oh, shit. <laughs> Can somebody get me a sad react to Poland again? <laughs> oh, not Poland. Wait, yeah. Maybe. No more partitions. <laughs> I, I really know sad. sometimes oh. when I really think about, sometimes when I think about Poland I cry. I know, me too. But anyways, so and we're going to leave with that with that in mind, the next podcast being Dying Con in the Airs. And um, and if you're wondering where to find us, um, I have a Patreon at Samwise J. Morganson. You can also fund us right here on Anchor, and you can also find us on Spotify and Google Podcasts. You can't find uh, me on any of those places. Right, because you have um, lots of ways to disguise yourself. Let's put it that way. You are indeed a very disembodied voice, and also non-existent. Disembodied voice, but you have a sister and not a cartoonist. That's a lie. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't meet a cartoonist. I thought you met a cartoonist because you seemed really excited about it. I did meet a cartoonist. <laughs> See, you had to have met something, or the, the cartoonist have... had to have met something. You can't just meet like nothing. Think of Deb, the the, the, uh, the sentient patch of haze. Does she have a body? No. Deb, the sentient patch of haze. Fjallkenry gear. <laughs> I have no idea what these mean. <laughs> it's welcome to Night Vale. Oh, okay. But anyway, so with that in mind, um, you can also find uh, Bizjubi wherever you put that into like the Facebook searches, I guess. Oh my gosh. Please don't find me on Facebook. I have a TikTok. I have a, 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 an Instagram. I um, have a TikTok and an Instagram. That's, um... That's, that's, oh, I have a Tumblr. I have a lot of Tumblrs, but I have a Tumblr. That one, you just type in Bijou B, which is B-I-Z-J-U-B-E, Bijou B. Awesome. And also on another note, you can find you can you can also tweet me now at YoungBards101. Yes, I have a Twitter. Of your nine people who to this the nine people. Hello, nine people. We love and appreciate you, and we adore you, and you're great. Please send us a message and tell us how much you love us, because of course you love us. There's <laughs> nine people listening to this. I, if, I mean, if you didn't love us, I wouldn't understand why you're listening to this. <laughs> so, of course you love us. So, flip in, message us. And don't message me. Don't, don't <laughs> message Jay Burke. They don't exist. Yeah, Jay Burke disappears and does not exist. I exist, though. Sometimes. <laughs> only sometimes I only do I exist. I really exist when, uh, when you call me and then... But I, but I, cease to exist after I don't. According to the government, I don't exist. I will not talk about that. But anyway, so we and also I'm getting now. Also, I'm also on Tumblr. You can find me at uh, SJM Morganstern forty two. <gasps> you have a Tumblr. Hang on, let me let me add you on Tumblr. It's SJ Morganstern forty two. Okay. Yeah. Forty-two. Yep, that's about right. Oh well, okay. It says that it doesn't like you. Okay. Well, is there like a like a like a? a I'll just send. I'll just. I'll just search for you. Okay. Cool. But anyway, so now the story goes after all all that. Um. So Patreon, we got um, we got Tumblr, we got Twitter. You can also find us on um, find, uh, find us on Facebook at History with Samwise J. Morganstern. I'll put the link to that in the video description and the podcast description, and also when we upload on YouTube, because I also have a YouTube channel. So um, find us there at Samwise J. Morganstern, where we put up the full podcast and all the awesome stuff. Anyways, so this has been the Mongols Podcast with Samwise J. Morgan Stern. And me, Bijou B. And Jaybird. And me.
disembodied voice. Disembodied voice. Now we gotta get you back. I have a sister. <laughs> you have a sister. You have a. Si- I have proof that Jaybrook has a sister. I am not going to argue with this. <laughs> I will argue. I will uh, purify wherever Jay Burke may or may not be and stab whatever may or may not be holding their disembodied voice. <laughs> oh my. Um, let's not zap. But anyways. Step, um, step. So anyways, um, wait for the new episode on Diane Condon and Bye. I love ya.